Also, Freunde der Sonne, <lacht> lasst uns mal uns äh, ansehen, was Dan da schon wieder gefunden hat, weil das äh, würde mich mal brennend interessieren. Hey guys, Dan here, welcome to this video. Today we're talking about dashboards, but not the physical dashboards, but actually the software or like the dashboard file that is running in SimHub. Because I think in the end that is the most important. Okay, ich bin jetzt schon verliebt. Wo download? What? Important thing, if you want to utilize a dash, you should know one dashboard, which wow. in my opinion is the best <gasps> market, yeah. is the lovely dashboard. Lovely dashboard is a universal dashboard, works very well with iRacing, with ACC and many other games, and it does not replicate, it's more like an all-in-one solution that should work with pretty much any car. And I think that's kind of important because at least if you hop between different cars, I think it's always difficult to remember what is where on the dash and then you're driving and you're trying to find the brake bias or something. And this is where, in my opinion, using a dashboard that is always the same is much more helpful than having a replica of the exact car one. So I've tested several dashboards and actually I only recently discovered Lovely Dashboard, but I think it is by far the best dashboard that you can use. I will show you how to install it. You need SimHub for it. And then I'll show you the features of the dash. So at the moment, the latest Lovely Dashboard version that is publicly available is version 1.6.11, I think. You can get that from the GitHub from Lovely Sim Racing. I'll leave a link in the description below. I'm going to show you the pre-release version of the Lovely Dashboard version 2, though. It is available on the Discord, but you need to be a Lovely member. That's a Patreon supporter page. I think it's like three euros or so per month. If you want to support the development and have an early look, I'll leave the links in the description below. I think it's great. And I think it's always worth to support developers that do this kind of stuff. Um, but it will be released for free in the future as well. So pretty simple to install it. Grab all the files from the Discord or from the GitHub, depending on which version you want to install. That should give you these files here. And what you want to do is pretty much, this is the dashboard file itself. You will need SimHub. If you don't know SimHub, I'm not going to cover that in this video, otherwise the video would be too long. But if you're a sim racer, you should familiarize yourself with SimHub. I can highly recommend. So just double click this to install it. Uh, you will need the Oswald font. Just double click to install. And then there are three files as well. The dash, background, JPEG, and a JavaScript and a JSON file. Copy those. Then go to your SimHub directory should be C program files x86 simhub and then go to javascript extensions and then paste these in here. I've already done that so I'm not going to overwrite them. And the cool thing is you have several options to customize the dash in this uh, JSON file. So for example, I put in my name, my number, my color, stuff like that. You can add your LFM ID, which is pretty cool. Then it shows you the registrations for the next LFM race. Wait, what? Have a look. It's all described very well here in the in the file. I think one interesting thing is the tile lab average reset key is set to A per default. You can use the SimHub joystick to keyboard mapping tool to put this on a wheel button as well. I just have it on A. It's fine. I have a button on my stream deck signed to A to reset that. But I'll show you what that is doing in the game. Then after you have installed it, it should be available in your dashboard list. And you will need to assign four function triggers. It's the trigger dash action A, B, C, D. You can use buttons on your wheel if you want to. You can also use the touch screen if you have a touch screen. I'll show you how to assign that. Just be careful here. I made the mistake. I tried to assign the touch screen zones while I'm not in the game. But if you see the dash screen here, these zones will not work. So you need to make sure you actually load up a session. Then you see the dash and then you can go here and assign the touch zone. So there's one on the left, the button A, one on the right, button B. The fuel is button C, and then the thing in the middle here is button D. Assign these, then you can go through all the function blocks of the dash. And like I said, if you want to add, for example, I don't know, a button for this as well, you can do so. If you do not have a wheel with a dashboard or like an external dash, you can still use the device. All you need to do is in SimHub go to Dash Studio, go to Dashboards, click on Start, click on Windowed, and then just put it on top of the real car dash, for example. Works as well. I will show you how it works on the on the <laughs> guy is that's the wheel though. Before we hit the track, I'll quickly show you the layout. On the top left, you have like little 
function buttons that show you... What, did I assign the light? I didn't. So for example, this shows the light if you turn it on. There's... A, do you see that on the camera? Yeah, you can... Oh, yeah, yeah, the dash wird sogar dunkler, wenn du das... An was? Da war aber ein richtiger fünf head And see it. Attention to detail. When you turn on the light, the dash actually automatically dims a little. Yeah. Is, I don't know. It's just a feature I think is super cool. Like, you see, this is done by somebody that actually uses the stuff, and it's just. Clear. Hey, schöne Grüße geht raus an denjenigen, der das uh, entwickelt oder diejenigen. Fünf Heads. Ever. Then you can see if I enable the wipers, you see the different settings here. Win off, one, two, three, and a little button for the ignition. Okay, we müssen gleich mal kurz was installieren. See, now we have that uh, power symbol. <laughs> and if I click the starter now, this will turn green. So this is a little widget area that shows you the status of the basic functions of the car. Oh, so was habe ich die ganze Zeit gesucht. Jetzt können wir wirklich endlich alles ausmachen. In the top right, you will oh. always have a little session display. So right now it shows us there are 57 minutes of practice left. We're currently P1 because nobody has set a lap time yet. Uh, we are on lap one and the current time of day in the sim is uh, nine o'clock. And then in this area here, we have the widgets. So there are two areas that you can assign to widgets that you like. And every side of the widget can show the same thing. So for example, if you want to, you can have the damage on both sides. Oh. Not that it really makes sense, but uh, you can put whatever you want in there and you can just go through it by tapping on the screen. Or if you assign the hardware button, then just... Da muss ich aber ganz schnell los! Click the hardware button. Um, to go through it, we have a little track map. Whether that is really useful on a small dash like on the Hyper here, I doubt it. Might be more useful if you have a big 6.8 inch dash closer to the screen for example but it's a cool nice to have feature it's always zoomed in a little so you can um das kurz aufzugreifen aber schaut man überhaupt auf das display nee aber es gibt menschen die haben einen display oben drüber und bei mir ist mein display ist genau vor dem display von dem auto das heißt mein dash in der mitte drinne also direkt weil das könnt ihr nicht sehen aber das ist bei mir genau im Fokus. Also ich habe auch einen Dash auf dem Wheel, das soll irgendwann mal weg, weil ich das auch nicht so cool finde, weil es auf Brusthöhe ist. Aber ich habe jetzt eins, das ist genau auf meinem Horizont und ich sehe das. Und das da, das holt mich richtig ab. Actually see something there. Oh. And the next one is the lap timing oh. We will go on the track in a second. So this will actually display something. But it shows you your estimated lap time, your last lap and your best lap. Then we have sectors, which also works well on iRacing now, shows all the sectors the tracks have. It typically was limited to three sectors before, but that has been fixed. So you can see your sector times here. Then the next one is a relative. It is not super accurate on SimHub because it gets the data from SimHub, obviously. And I don't know, the ACC, API, telemetry, whatever. It's, good. it's just like giving overlay makers a hard time. It doesn't really correspond to the relative in game. And yeah. the one in game even isn't really good. Uh, but there's a relative. It should be good for a rough estimate, but don't use it for super, super precise uh, judgment of gaps and stuff like that. Then there's a standing overlay. You can see we are last now. Next one is tire pressures. Yes! Yes! Shows you the current pressure, the brake temperature, and the tire surface temperature, I think. I'm not, I'm, or is it the core temperature? I'm not exactly sure. Uh, it shows you pretty much whatever the in-game dashboard will show you for tire temperature. So I guess it's core temperature. We'll also show you which tire set you're on. Dry one at the moment. And this is insanely useful for ACC, the tire pressure simulator. It is taking the average of two laps of your tire pressures. So especially, let's say you're at the end of your stint, you want to see how do I have to adjust my tire pressures yeah! for the next stint. You can enable this, reset it, Drive two laps and get the exact reading yeah. of your average tire pressure. Super, super useful. We'll uh, show none right now, not a number because we haven't driven a meter yet. Um, but this is where this key that you can assign in that settings file comes into play. For example, if I hit A now, you, you see it shows clearing and then it goes, it's, that's actually, oh, I should start my pedals. 
Let's actually drive a meter so it gets some data. Okay, we're out of the pits now. And you can see now the average tire pressure is, if I put the other widget on here, is exactly the same as the current pressures because, well, if you haven't driven a lot, then average is the same as the uh, current one, obviously. Mm. Then there's a damage meter, so if I'll just quickly drive against the wall here, it will now show I have heavy damage on the front, the left side has medium damage, the right side is okay, and somehow by driving with the front <laughs> into the tire barrier, I managed to damage the rear as well. Interesting. It will also show you the estimated pit time, 1 minute and 10 seconds. But what I discovered here, the estimated pit time only shows you the damage of the bodywork. If you have suspension damage, then this is not being shown here. Then, since we currently are sitting in the tire barrier and there's a yellow flag, you can see here, sector 1, yellow flag at the moment. Ooh. It's just so much cool stuff on here. I think everybody should at least try out this dashboard. It's just, in my opinion, the best dashboard out there that you can use. Okay, then, well, on the right side, you can have exactly the same, obviously. Then there's one area in the middle. Let's turn on the car. That will show you your current gear, RPMs, and then very, very tiny, it shows you the air temperature, the track temperature, the track state. Really cool for ACC, you see this OPT. That means track state optimal yes. right now. You have yes. a weather prediction in here. So it's sunny right now. In 10 minutes, still sunny. In 30 minutes, still sunny. Not very useful on iRacing. <coughs> Ey, das ist so gut. Wenn die so ein, so ein Lifetime-Ding haben, ich würde das instant kaufen. Instant. Ich mag nur keine Abo-Modelle, weil ich einfach nicht 500 Sachen abonnieren möchte. Aber wenn die das irgendwann anbieten, dass man das sich für einen Zwacken kaufen kann, ich würde das instant für einen Zwacken kaufen, weil das komplett durchdacht ist. Da hat sich jemand, da, also du siehst halt, dass jemand da gesessen hat, sich das überlegt hat, selber am Fahren ist und die Hardware komplett sinnvoll ausnutzt. So geil. Um, but I'm sure we'll get rain soon, Copium. You can also go through three widgets here. One is just RPM and gear. One is with the current clock on top. And another one will show you a delta against your best lap. So then we will have to drive a little bit. We'll do that in a second. And then in the bottom right, we'll also have to drive a little bit to get information on that. And what I typically use on ACC, at least during qualifying, when I'm trying to estimate which tire pressures I need. I have the current tire pressures on the left and the two lap average on the right. You can, by the way, also configure how many laps it should average in that settings file. I think two is, is a good value. I think it's also the default one. Dash also will show you when you're in the pit limiter, obviously. And then on the bottom, you also have the traction control set to three right now. Traction control cut, also known as TC2, is disabled, so this will show zero. Then we have the ABS, the brake bias, if I change that, you can see it here. And the current motor map, set to 1. But yeah, I hope it won't be too bad to read the dash while I'm driving here. But I thought it would be a bit cooler to show this on the wheel than just with a, with a capture of the sim up screen. But you can now see that the average First of all, we, we're gonna reset it now that we have some data. So let's say you just did 20 laps and you want to estimate the average tire pressures of the next two laps. It should work by just doing nothing because it will always average the last two laps. But if you ever want to reset it, press A or whatever key you assigned for a second, then it will clear it. You see the not a number for a short second and then it will start averaging the last two laps again. Geil. I've had a few cases where this was a little bit buggy after some laps, so just clear the data. Also nur mal für euch als, äh, also nur mal für euch, warum das so geil ist. Also manche Menschen benutzen ja externe Tools, also sprich, wie bei mir, eine Excel-Tabelle. Und du musst jedes Mal, wenn du ein, ein Bildschirm hast und raustappst in einer Applikation, musst du wieder reintappen, um das einzustellen. Das Geile hieran ist es, dass es permanent auf deinem Dash ist und du nicht immer raustappen musst. Das wird der ein oder andere jetzt wahrscheinlich sich so denken, hä, bist du blöde, was soll das denn? Ist doch bloß ein bisschen tappen und ist so eigentlich gar kein Problem. 
Doch, ist es. Weil du musst für jeden Reifendruck musst du raustappen. Und das ist irgendwann super nervig, wenn du immer zur einen Seite zur Tastatur greifen musst und bei der anderen Seite zur Maus. Und so kannst du dir das komplett knicken und brauchst das nicht machen und hast halt deine Reifendrücke da. Und das ist einfach so geil. If you wanna get a new reading. I think especially for ACC it's really, really useful. But yeah, you also have nice widgets or like pop-ups, not really widgets, pop-ups if you change car settings, traction control for example, what else do I have here? Is this doing? Oh yeah, TC, this is TC2 or TC cut. As you can see, I have that disabled on the Lambo here. So let's go, oh, car is still okay. Track map works. You can see my uh, lap times, estimated lap 31 minutes. Last lap 12 minutes. This will work when you, when we finished one lap. You can see the sector times updating here. Currently in sector two, or in sector three. Then you have the relative here. See all the cars around you. God, it's so hard to look at the screen and talk at the same time plus drive at the same time. There yeah, you can see. The relative is a little, this is not 1.9 seconds here, the car ahead. It's, that's the SimHub problem. Well, probably Leider. the data that Kunos is giving to SimHub. So, will we improve from P28? No, we are 5.7. Das kostet nichts. Das könnt ihr euch einfach for free runterladen. Also nur wenn ihr äh, eine Beta haben möchtet, also eine ganz, ganz early hier 2.0, dann müsst ihr, müsst ihr was bezahlen und ein Abo äh, abschließen. Ansonsten kann man sich das for free runterladen. Seconds of the pace. Ah, shame. But <laughs> that's not the point here. But you can see now the tires are getting hotter. The average obviously is still below that because we did start with cold tires. So after a full two laps and two laps on hot tires, this is a very, very good indicator to estimate how you need to change your tire pressures. But we can now see the fuel calculator here. We have 32 liters left. Average consumption. 1.88 liters, that corresponds. Nee, das ist ein Programm, also das läuft über SimHub. Also es geht nicht um das Lenkrad, sondern nur um das, was hier drin ist. Und das läuft über SimHub. To the value that the game is showing as well. And this should give us fuel for 17 laps. Also corresponds to the game. And then we can also click this. Then it will also show you that the fuel should be for 35 more minutes of driving. So if you wanna Estimate, wow. for example, if you have a stint timer, you want to see if you have enough fuel for that. Very, very useful. And then another one is a, a refuel. I mean, we are just in the practice session here, so there's obviously not really useful information. I mean, if I wanted to finish this practice session, I would have to refuel 26 liters. More useful in a race, obviously. Let's see if it updates now, because I guess the fuel consumption is 1.82. Yeah, see? I was more oh, geil ist das, das efficient da on the last lap. Save the planet, planet and stuff. Uh, so now it tells me to refuel less liters. So, yeah. I think there's everything that you need in this dashboard. You can always, like, at a glance, see what's going on with the car. And, yeah, I think it's awesome. Some of the widgets do not work on iRacing, obviously. I mean, iRacing is more of a basic simulation where you don't have weather, you don't have tire pressures that... Well, you do have tire pressures, but they don't really matter as much as on ACC. You don't have to meet, like, a specific window. You typically just go lowest tire pressure. So on iRacing, the tire overlays are not there. You get one different widget with an um, overview of the car, oil temperature, stuff like that. Actually, let's hop into iRacing and quickly show you. Dan, ich habe aber jetzt eine Frage, die hier aufgetaucht ist gerade. Findet das Dash auch raus, wo der Grello ist? The different widget that is available there. But before, let me get out of this game. One insanely cool feature is the LFM integration. So let's say <coughs> I sign up to this race in one hour. It will actually show you on the splash screen or on the desktop or whatever, idle screen, when your next LFM race is about to start. So now I signed up for it. Bullish, kaufe! Wir sind drin. 
give it a thumbs up, maybe subscribe to the channel to not miss any future videos and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye bye. Okay, danke Dan für das Video. Muchas gracias. Wir gehen da jetzt rein. Wir gehen da jetzt rein. Hey Siri, schalte Rick an. <lacht>